Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about another type of macronutrient, the last macronutrient, um, which is lipids. So far we've talked about carbohydrates and then last week we talked about protein. So this week we're going to do the last macronutrient of the three. And then next week we'll go into micronutrients, um, which is stuff like vitamins and like electrolytes and things that you don't really eat in like in a lot in large amounts so micro and then for the last week we'll just do a review game I'm not really sure what to do I, I'm thinking of doing Jeopardy but if you guys have any other suggestions you can put it in chat too because I'm open to new ideas cahoots. cahoots sure I feel like we do cahoot lipidy I just put lipidy in quotes because lipids is kind of referred to as fats so any like fatty food I guess like meat is also a fatty food. Hey, what about cheese? Cheese is definitely a fatty food. I'm not a huge fan of cheese, to be honest. <laughs> I like. I don't think I could eat cheese like plain. It has milk. To, yeah, milk is too. Like any like animal product would be considered a fatty food. Yeah, so like any type of meat would be definitely be one. Like chicken wings. Eggs. Yeah, and also like fish. Yeah, eggs. Eggs isn't. Yeah, eggs is a healthy fat too, or just a lipid fat. Yeah, any any animal product product usually has a lot of fat because the animal itself definitely had a lot of fat in it when it was. Living. Wait, what about eggs? They come from the animal. Yeah, eggs too. Eggs are like, I feel like um, scientists think eggs are pretty like controversial in like the scientific world because people think that. Like some cultures, I know that like you eat a ton of eggs, like maybe six a day. But scientists think. What that about bats and snakes? Bats and snakes? I don't know. That's not very a very common part, but maybe. I, mean, I, feel like those I think be- China eats them. Yeah, I feel like bats and snakes, they seem super lean. Like they don't really seem very fatty. So I feel like they do mostly protein. Yeah. Uh, and bats? bats yeah bats look really skinny i don't know but yeah that's that for eggs a day that you're probably getting enough like fats and proteins from that i know like what about shark fins shark fins that's probably fatty i'm pretty sure a lot of fish products are really fatty like salmon and like mackerel i don't know what else type you guys eat like or like tuna that those are also really fatty fish especially like you know, like when you see like those really expensive bluefin tunas and like those sushi videos and they're like, they have a, like cod? cod, yeah, cod is, cod is actually really high in protein though. It's like one of the most protein dense things there are like cooked cod. If you guys rem- remember from last week, there was like a diagram that had like the most amount of proteins per 100 calories of each type of food and cod was actually number one. So Per 100 calories cooked cod has like a ton of protein because it's not really fatty, but salmon is. Um, but yeah, so next, or just a, just a quick review. So macronutrients, once again, are basically nutrients that provide calories or energy, and they're basically just required in large amounts, hence the name macro. And we just need it for our body, every single body function, really, and to carry out all the activities that we do in life, like We'll need energy for all um, macronutrients basically also provide us with energy. And I feel like in dieting cultures, yeah, people might think that you should eat less fat or like no fat at all, but fat is literally, or lipids is a more scientific term, are literally a macronutrient that your body depends on. So it's really important that you do eat fats. And it honestly, the type of fat that you eat has a bigger correlation to like obesity and other types of like cardiovascular diseases but basically overall you just need fat so as you kind of tell like I use fat and lipids interchangeably so do you guys think fats and lipids are the same thing yes or no You have a 50-50 chance, so just, like, put it in chat or unmute yourself. What do you guys think? Are fats the same as Yes. Lipids? Yes? No? Yeah, I've seen, like, both yes. choices. They're actually, it actually depends on, like, which POV you take. So, like, 
from a chemist's point of view, like fats are solid at room temperature and oils are liquid at room temperature and lipids, if like this, fats and oils basically follow, fall under the um, umbrella of lipids according to chemists. But like from a nutritionist point of view, um, fats or anything from like triglycerides, fatty acids, phospholipids, and they basically provide quite a lot of calories per gram. But then lipids are any type of fats then that don't necessarily provide 90 kilocals per gram. So like usually lipids is a lot more of like a broader term than fats. Fats can be classified as like solid according to chemists or fats provide nine kilocalories per gram according to nutritionists. So yeah, nutritionists basically define fats based or like classify fats and stuff based off of like their caloric contribution. Um, while chemists kind of determine what a fat is based off their physical properties. So I am going to try my best to refer to it what we're talking about, fat, well, I'm gonna refer, do my best to refer to it as lipids because fats and lipids differ because fats are a little bit more specific than lipids. So what exactly are lipids? So lipids are basically just, they're really similar to carbohydrates in the sense that they both contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are, found like literally everywhere. These three elements are really plentiful in our world. And the lipids are similar to carbohydrates in that these are like the main three elements that they consist of. In fact, all lipids and all carbohydrates have these three elements. But the main difference between carbohydrates and lipids is that Lipids are hydrophobic, meaning that they're insoluble in water or they basically are scared of water, right? Like hydrophobic, you can think like, like look at the prefix hydro, like water phobic, like a phobia basically just means that these lipids are like scared of water. And this picture down here kind of just shows what being scared of water means. Like it just basically means that you can't mix them together. They're always going to separate and... Um, and that's basically just because of like hydrogen bonds and these different forces and lipids that basically don't allow them to be attracted to water. So what is hydrophobic? Hydrophobic means that these molecules but what, are like what are like what is hydrophobic, but like, uh -huh. like what kind? Like I mean like so uh -huh. what separates from the water? What do you mean like, what separates from the water? Like what's the um, oh lipids? Lipids are hydro. Oh, lipids. They separate from the water. Yeah, sorry if I didn't make that clear. Apollo. Wait, aren't lipids like oil? Yeah, lipids do include include oils, and yeah, so it's like oil like floats to the top of the water, right? Yeah, I guess another thing you can think about like if you literally dropped like a piece of salmon in water and you mix it around, it's not going to dissolve because salmon like a chunk of salmon has a lot of fat in it so it's not going to like um, mix or like dissolve into the water unlike if you drop like a piece of bread or something like that into water you'd kind of see it like dissolve um it's just kind of like break apart if you were to mix it around in water but fat can't do that uh, because it's hydrophobic so it is scared of water and it doesn't mix with water and quality of lipids like when we consume them is that they basically make us feel really satisfied and full um carbohydrates are like once again they're like our main source of energy but you could eat a ton of bread but still not feel extremely full but on the other hand if you were to eat like a jar of peanut butter even though like it's it doesn't like a small jar of peanut butter might not look like a lot you'll feel a lot more fuller because lipids they just feel, make us feel a lot more satisfied than carbohydrates, especially because um, lipids, once again, they're like, what's the word? The lipids basically, yeah, they just make us feel more full and satisfied. So like if you were to add a little bit of fat to like every single meal, you'll definitely would feel like a lot more satisfied after that meal. Um, so yeah, and also feel free to put in chat or stop me whenever you have questions. 
So the next slide is basically just like about fatty acids. So this is kind of going a little bit into like biochem. So basically fatty acids make up every single fat out there, like the fat in salmon that I keep talking about, the fat in the nuts that we eat or like the beef that we eat. They're, if you look at them under a really, really good microscope, you'll just see a bunch of fatty acids in the fat. Basically fatty acids, like it says, they're basically building blocks for food and for the fat in our body because our body can actually um, produce fat on its own, but, or like produce fatty acids and fats on its own. Like fat essentially is, you know, like the storage for our body, um, like our body stores energy in the form of fat because it basically produces its own fat. And fatty acids, literally, they're just hydrocarbon chains. And at the end, they have this like carboxylic group. So this is a really cool representation. Like this is just this long hydrocarbon chain, which is just a lot of hydrogen and carbon atoms. And at the end, we have this carboxyl group, which looks like that has COO. And then there's an H right here. Um, and Often when we look at like a nutrition label, like if you look at the back of like, I don't know, an Oreos or a cereal box, you'll see like your nutrition label that's literally found on everything. And under like fats, you'll see that there's usually saturated fats and then also trans fats. So the first classification of fats is saturated and unsaturated. Saturated is super straightforward. It's basically just, this is what they look like up close. They're super packed because there's no double bonds. And as a result of being really, really packed, um, these saturated fats are usually solid at room temperature. So like, for instance, butter is like a solid at room temperature because the fatty acids that, can, that make up butter have no double bonds. So all these hydrogens are like super packed together. And as a result, it, is more like dense and it maintains a solid state. Yeah, Paula? Wait, how many servings of fruit do you have to have a day? Fruit? Yeah, a fruit. Uh, I'm not actually sure about that. You could search that up. Um, but anyways, yeah, so saturated fats, they all have zero double bonds. But on the other hand, there's unsaturated fats, which are usually at liquid are liquid at room temperature. And this is because they have a double one double bond. They have at least one double bond within the chain of carbons. And as a result, you can't fit as many hydrogen bonds. And if you've learned chemistry or like learned about Lewis structures, basically this double bond means that there's less um, electrons available to be able to bond it to hydrogen. So as a result, basically unsaturated fats, they're just not as compact with hydrogens. And as a result, they're like less dense and loose, more loosely packed. And so they tend to be a liquid at room temperature. So a good example of unsaturated fats would be like oils, because they're usually, um, other than like coconut oil, they're, they're, uh, they are liquid at room temperature. So saturated fats are super straightforward. That's the only, there's only one type of saturated fat and that's just saturated fats. But unsaturated fats get a little bit more complicated. So there's basically four types of unsaturated fats underneath it, underneath unsaturated. So monosaturated, like the prefix suggests, mono meaning one. Monosaturated fats basically just have one double bond in them. So this diagram right here, this would be an example of a monounsaturated fat. And I'm just gonna let someone in. And then polyunsaturated fats would have two or more double bonds. So you wouldn't just see one like little bend or like one double bond, you'd see two or maybe three or much more. And then another way that you can classify fatty acids are trans and cis. And we'll go more into that later because it's a really interesting topic. So I'll cover more about that after we talk about monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and overall saturated fats. So starting with saturated fatty acids, basically I just included a list of some foods that contain fatty acids or saturated fatty acids. 
and and we're not doing a gym kit we're doing a kahoot and remember saturated fatty acids they're usually like solid at room temperature because like this diagram shows like these these fatty acids are fitting as many hydrogens as they possibly can so they're usually solid at room temperature and some examples would basically be like fatty pieces of meat like beef lamb pork or chicken although pork and chicken have significantly less than beef and lamb and also any dairy products like cream whole milk so basically any milk that hasn't been reduced to fat yet or butter cheese is a really good example in shortening and also coconut or palm oil what about the butter 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 yeah butter yeah it's right here it's it is a oh okay yeah, it is a saturated fat because it's solid. And, and basically saturated fatty acids, uh, I'm not sure you guys actually used coconut oil before, but coconut oil at room temperature is usually solid. Like you have to spoon it out uh, and it's like, it kind of looks like lip balm, like a white lip balm. And basically there's like a lot of debate whether consumption of saturated fats is bad for your heart health and this like this debate has been going on for like decades and it's clear that saturated fats do raise our like the amount of lipids in our blood and it can cause like inflammation in our body but it's unclear if unsaturated if saturated fats incre increase the risk of heart disease but generally um, the American diet is really, really high in saturated. In fact, some consider it too high. And this is because like, um, well, like a typical American diet, what is uh, usually, I feel like it's customary to start off with like bacon and then there's a lot of cheese and milk and butter in our diets. So as a result, American diets, like the typical American diet is definitely really high in saturated fats. Apollo? Wait, uh, is it possible to have butter that has no fat? I don't think that's possible. I guess like... Wait, or reduce yeah. fat. Yeah, I think reduce fat is definitely possible, but... What about peppers? Peppers? Yeah. Peppers, those are like... Those are like a veggie, right? Like they're considered... Yeah. Yeah, those like usually fruits and vegetables and things like that. They don't really have a lot of fat in them. I think actually broccoli does have some fat, but I don't really remember. I'm pretty sure it does though. I don't know. I did that. And <laughs> ice cream? Yeah, ice cream. Like if it's ice cream, that's not gelato because gelato actually does gelato have dairy? I don't know if it does. But yeah, ice cream that has like milk in it or like any type of dairy products, that definitely is like what about like frozen yogurt, like that counts as ice cream? Yeah, yogurt. Yeah, that's like a dairy product. Although I'm pretty sure like these days, a lot of yogurt, like actually there's still like whole milk yogurt, but a lot of yogurt these days are like reduced fat and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, basically a lot of any dairy products and stuff that come from like animals, usually these are all like saturated fats, saturated, solid, right? Like SS, that's kind of an easy way to remember it. Saturated fats are usually solid and yeah, usually any type of um, meat that you what eat. What about Cheetos? Cheetos? I'm pretty sure they have like zero fat because they're mostly carbs. Okay, so now we're going into unsaturated fats. So unsaturated fats, there are exceptions. Unsaturated fats are usually liquids at room temperature, but as you can see with this diagram, there's avocados and there's nuts and there's seeds, which are definitely not liquid at room temperature. So they're kind of considered. What about olive oil? Uh, olive oil would, yeah, it's on here. That's a monosaturated fatty acid. So basically. Well, you just put olive. Oh yeah, sorry. This means just like olive and peanut oil. So oils. Yeah, that's probably a better way to put it. Okay. Like a monounsaturated fatty acid is basically one that has only one um, double bond, so hence the prefix mono. And monounsaturated fatty acids, 
Yeah, the thing in the middle is salmon. And although I'm pretty sure salmon is not a monounsaturated fatty acid. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I should have just blocked that out. But anyways, monounsaturated fatty acids would include anything like olive and peanut oil, avocados, any literally any seed or not like some of them would be sunflower seeds or like a chopping board. Wal wal no, not the chopping board. Walnuts and I think there's also peanuts in this photo. Yeah, and there's hazelnuts and sunflower seeds. And yeah, so basically these these are usually plant based. So ignore the salmon because those are definitely not. Is barbecue? Is what? Is barbecue saturated fat? Barbecue. Wait, can you say that again? I think you got Is barbecue a saturated fat? Like the sauce? Well, the whole thing? I don't know. With sauce. Oh, and then probably, yeah. Have, probably have saturated. And like, you technically have like whole pork barbecue. Yeah, oh yeah. Then that's probably like mostly saturated because like the pork itself is like solid. Um, so speaking of monounsaturated fatty acids and fats, research has actually showed that like plant-based monounsaturated fats can lower your risk of like cardiovascular disease and it can like overall extend your life, probably not by a significant portion, but you know, if you're really big on like preserving your life and trying to live a really long life, Monounsaturated fatty acids are definitely your best friend. So yeah, these are monounsaturated fatty acids. And then the last, or no, the second type of unsaturated fats are polyunsaturated. So these basically just have like one or two double bonds. And under polyunsaturated fats, you can um, put them under omega-3 or omega-6. These names just come from like scientific based names. I don't really understand. I don't really know exactly why they're called that, but it's some scientific meaning. But basically our body definitely needs polyunsaturated fats to function because um, your body can't produce polyunsaturated fatty acids actually. So you have to get these from your diet. And, and polyunsaturated fats are really useful for like, um, they're really useful for our muscle movement. And also they help prevent blood clotting and blood clotting is definitely not a good thing because it can lead to stuff that is it can lead to heart, heart problems i can lead to like strokes and heart attacks yeah heart attacks thanks so usually polyunsaturated fats and any unsaturated fat really does fish skin have a like a three fish skin actually i'm not really sure i feel like usually i don't we don't really eat a bunch of fish skin but I don't know I don't know what fish skin is made out of <laughs> and so yeah under this omega-3 fatty acids are really really beneficial for your heart health um, and these include things like fatty fish so like salmon sardines tuna mackerel herring trout yeah there's probably a lot more and then also things like ground flax seeds and flaxseed oil I feel like flax seeds aren't really popular or like they're not super widely used but that's definitely another good um a good source of omega-3 fats and also soybeans oysters walnuts sunflower seeds chia seeds hemp seeds i'm a really big fan of like chia seeds i feel like they're they don't really have much of, of a flavor but you can literally add them on anything like yogurt what about like, almonds 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 yeah i think almonds are more of a monounsaturated fat because it's like a nut but yeah peanuts um, yeah peanuts are, peanuts are nuts though yeah peanuts are nuts so they'd also be a monounsaturated fat okay. but yeah if, i'm sure like usually elderly for elderly and just older people omega-3 fatty acids are super super important because you know as you age you have like a higher percent chance of getting a heart attack or a stroke and so omega-3s fatty acids are super, super important. So you, when you guys get older, which you guys will eventually do, although that's quite a 
long time away, um, you'd want to make sure that you have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids because it'll help keep your heart healthy. And then omega-6, there's a lot of controversial stuff in the nutrition science world and omega-6 fatty acids are definitely one of them. So omega-6 fatty acids basically include anything like canola, basically all of these oils that are listed here. And if you, if you use like vegetable oil, um, it might have some of this stuff too. But there's basically a lot of debate about the inflammatory role of omega-6 fatty acids. So most Americans, we consume more than enough of omega-6 fatty acids. Like they're really not a problem for our diet, but there is debate over whether consuming too much of omega-6 fatty acids can increase inflammation in your body and raise your risk of certain health conditions, mostly obesity. Um, is that true? It's, it's like debatable because like some, the thing about like doing research about this stuff is like sometimes one research will show that there definitely is a correlation between omega-6 fatty acids and obesity and inflammation. But then there might be another research that's just as valid that comes out and shows that there's minimal or no correlation at all. So I feel like it really depends on the person. That's my take. Like there's not, it's not going to be the same for every single person because we all have really, really different genetics and our bodies are really, really unique. So we, they, they, um, they like take things differently. Like they might react to omega-6 fatty acids differently than another person. So yeah, I guess maybe if you want it to be safe, then like a safer answer would just to be to- How do allergies- What? How do allergies happen? How, allergies, that's more about like the immune system. That's just like your body. See, like if you're allergic to peanuts, I'm not sure exactly what it is in peanuts, but when you consume peanuts, um, there's basically not exactly something wrong, but just I think it's like a mutation or something in your genetics that programs like the immune system, your immune system to actually attack whatever peanut, whatever there is in peanuts. So as a result, your body just has like this inflammatory response, but this immune response to it, even though it doesn't, it's not really an invader. Like it's kind of like how your body would respond to, let's say, like a dis bacteria. Like, yeah, like a bacteria or sickness. It's want it wants to get rid of it, but um, there's there's really nothing bad about eating peanuts. It's just some people's bodies just react differently. Any questions so far? Okay. So yeah, somebody already put it. Who is this? Yeah. Angelina already put the nutrition stuff in chat for Cheetos, but here's the nutrition facts for Flaming Hot Cheetos. Um, I actually am not a fan of Cheetos, which is probably a really controversial opinion again. But yeah, this is, I just chose it because it was like one of the first things that showed up. But under total fat, like we already talked about saturated fats. That's like the stuff that this type of fats that don't have any double bonds in them. But what about like trans fat? And I remember when I was like at someone's house, I remember someone told me like, if there's trans fats on that label, do not eat the food. And I don't know if you guys have been told the same thing, but I was always wondering like, what exactly is trans fat? So basically unsaturated fats can be either cis or trans and cis fats you kind of see, you can see in this top diagram like all the hydrogen atoms are like in the same plane at the bond right here these two hydrogen atoms are in the same plane they're right next to each other so as a result um these cis bonds have the, the, the cis double bond basically causes a bend or it's also called a kink that basically prevents the fatty acid from packing really tightly. And basically the cis bonds or the cis fats, they maintain liquids at, they maintain the liquid physical state at room temperature. So yeah, this is what a cis fat would look like. And cis fats are like basically any type of natural type of fat. They, they're usually all any natural unsaturated fat, they're usually all cis. 
But on the other hand, there's also trans fats, um, which is what we saw on the nutrition label. So trans fats, basically when at this double bond and this unsaturated fat, the hydrogens are not in the same plane. They're in two different planes. Like they're across from each other. And as a result, you can kind of see here, there's no bends in this fatty acid chain. And it basically results in the unsaturated fats to be more tightly held together. And it might not be a liquid at room temperature anymore. And trans fats, they can be natural or artificial. For the most part, uh, for the most part um, trans fats that we eat in our diet are mostly artificial. So, but you can also find trans fat in like animal products. So like meat and dairy from cows, sheep and goats. Cows, sheep, and goats are probably the animals that have like the most fat in them. Pigs and chicken, you know, although pigs look really, really chubby. They're actually, yeah, like they look like they would have a lot, but they're actually, they don't really consist as many or as a var large variety of fats as cows, sheep, and goats do. And, you know, cows, sheep, and goats, they all are kind of like under what the same sheep family. Do? You eat sheep? No, they don't eat sheep. That'd be kind of <laughs> like... What do they do? Uh, I don't know what they eat, but they basically, they also can produce trans fats. Um, so as a result, if you eat cow or sheep or goat, or you drink the milk from one of these three, there might be a little bit of trans fat in it, but it's pretty like minimal. But on the other hand, this is where we would get most of our trans fats from in our diet. And that's basically from hydrogenated vegetable oils. So basically, it just means that it's like human made hydrogenated, like this does not happen in nature or naturally, like, this is because of humans. And this picture at the left kind of shows like some examples of what you'd find this hydrogenated vegetable oil, uh, vegetable oil in. So like pizza, like literally anything a lot of really yummy and what people would call like, I don't know, yeah, just like really good. Junk food? food. Yeah, junk, yeah, that's the word, junk food. These are all have trans fats. And this is because they usually have hydrogenated vegetable what oils. What about chocolate chips? Chocolate chips, if they're like really pure and they're not, they don't have like added. percent sugar. Yeah, that, that probably wouldn't have a lot of trans fats. But really, if you're looking for trans fats, if you're like, after the, after today, I don't want to have any more trans fats. As long as you see, uh, as long as you see something like hydrogenated in like the ingredients, under the ingredient, they might not call it vegetable oil. I think there's other names that they like to call it that are sound a little bit more chemical. But if anything is hydrogenated, that basically means there's trans fats. Or you can also just look at how many grams of trans fats there are in that product on the nutrition label. But basically, why, why do humans hydrogenate vegetable oils? Well, basically, um, hydrogenation basically increases the shelf life and also it keeps the flavor of food kind of stable. So things like crackers and um, even things like wheat thins and also like vegetable shortening or really any baked goods, cereals, candies, granola, cookies, bars, chips, snack foods, like these things, they can last a long time on the shelf. Um, and they have like, I'm no food taste tester, but they are considered to have a really stable flavor and also, especially things that are like fried, basically they have a lot of hydrogenated vegetable oils or just hydrogenated oils. So as a result, yeah, you're eating, those have high amounts of trans fats. And this is not a controversial um, conclusion because both like various countless trials have kind of proved that artificial trans fats can slightly increase, or not slightly, they significantly, sorry, they significantly increase your risk of heart disease. So obviously if you have a diet just that consists of all junk foods, right? Like junk food already has like a really negative connotation to it. And that's for a reason. It's because 
junk food is usually associated with a bunch of artificial trans fats. So um, these artificial trans fats, because you kind of you can kind of think of it like it's artificial, right? It's not something that's naturally found. So it, um, like any other type of fat, it can basically cause you to be more obese or basically cause um, things like heart attacks or strokes. And we'll kind of get more into heart attacks and strokes when we talk about cholesterol. But yeah, any questions so far? Because I feel like it's been a lot. Okay. Yeah. So the reason, another reason why trans fats can like increase your risk of heart disease is that they can actually damage like the inner lining of our blood vessels. And, you know, fats are basically like transported throughout our body through our blood vessels. So because they're not like naturally found in our body, isn't really, our body usually is like used to cis fats. They're not really used to trans fats. So as a result, they can bond kind of weirdly to the lining of our blood vessels. And this can result in like more inflammation in your body. And it can basically result in excess weight or obesity. So the correlation between like junk food and obesity, like there's actually real science behind that because they have a lot of trans fats. Once again, trans fats can really impact like your heart, the health of your heart. Um, and there's also been research that shows that like trans fats can also cause you to be more resistant to insulin. Does anybody remember what that means? Like if someone becomes more resistant to insulin, what could that lead to? I think we talked about this in the second week. Does that ring a bell for anyone? Insulin resistance. Diabetes? Yeah, nice, Grace. Like, yeah, if you, trans fats can cause your insulin to be like, um, it'll be become more resistant. So even though your insulin levels might increase a lot because of the blood sugar in your body, there might be less insulin being produced because your body's just already used to it. So this can result in type two diabetes. Remember type one is like, it's not really caused by something. It's, you just have it. Um, but type two is something that can be developed and yeah. So basically this one I think is also kind of a controversial research, um, but it has shown that sometimes trans fats can lead to insulin resistance, which ultimately leads to type two di diabetes. So completely getting rid of like trans fats would be really, really difficult, especially given the world that we live in today, where like the majority of the things on the food shelves are like processed stuff. And if we wanted to get rid of trans fats completely, we'd have to cut out like milk, uh, cow milk, which might not be difficult, but we also have to just completely eliminate processed foods. Um, but honestly, the point of me talking about this really is just to, uh, so to make sure that you guys are more aware of what exactly trans fats are. So when you see it like on the back of a nutrition label, you'll have a better understanding of what exactly it is. And honestly, like a lot of people say, you can really just like eat anything um, at, oh gosh, what's the word? <laughs> like at a good level, like I can't think of the word, but you can basically eat anything. Yeah, okay, I, I can't think of it. But really, if you just eat any type of food mindfully, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to impact your health that much. And like the research that I was talking about earlier about like trans fats damaging your blood vessels and leading to heart disease, these are only like really extreme cases where people were like literally tested and these people were constantly eating processed foods that had a lot of trans fats. So yeah, really, you don't have to completely remove trans fat or anything that might be considered like bad. There's really no, no food that's bad for you. It's just that anything in extremes can lead to health effects, bad health effects. Yeah, that's just something really important to keep in mind because I'm not really trying to tell you guys like eat this and don't eat this. You can eat anything you want, really. Just eat it 
you can just make sure that like you don't eat it in excess. So this is a really important word that you'll probably see a lot if you go into like AP bio when you learn about macromolecules and that's triglycerides. So triglycerides, they're like the major type of lipid that you can find in food and also in our body. Um, like our body stores fat in the form of triglycerides. And so trigly uh, triglycerides are just made up of three fatty acids and a glycerol. Glycerol, you know, kind of runs with alcohol. So glycerol is basically just a type of alcohol. And triglycerides, like this list shows, they have a lot of different functions. They help provide us energy. Even though carbohydrates are like our main energy source, triglycerides also provide us with some energy. Like they are like energy storage, right? Like um, the fat in our, that's stored in our body is for when our survival instincts come on and we aren't eating any carbohydrates, then our body might start to tap into our fat stores or the fat in our body. But that's really only for extreme cases, like when you have gone without food for a really long period of time. Yeah, so like the second point already says, like it's a primary form of storing energy in our body and it also insulates and protects us right like you know those seals and like sea lions in the arctic or antarctica they have huge or really thick layers of blubber and blubber is mostly just fat and it helps insulate and protect you and it keeps you nice and warm and triglycerides are also really important for like absorbing and transporting fat soluble vitamins so a lot of vitamins are fat soluble and we'll get into that next week. But yeah, fats are definitely really helpful in making sure that we're absorbing the vitamins that we actually eat. Okay. So there's one more thing that I want to talk about that you'll often see on nutrition levels and that's cholesterol. Um, I'm not sure you guys have heard it before, but a lot of people will talk about like, oh, cholesterol levels and so I'm, so what exactly is cholesterol though? So cholesterol is a type of fat and it's, if you search up, what is cholesterol? It'll tell you like, it's a waxy like fat that's found in all cells of our body. And that's true. So basically cholesterol is just a fat. And apparently Google wants you to let you know that it's like, it feels like wax. And I'm just going to be talking about the two types of cholesterol, but Basically, cholesterol as a whole it has a lot of crucial functions um, because it's found in all cells of our body and our liver actually makes cholesterol. Although, yeah, although our liver actually can make cholesterol, it's also in some foods, mostly like meat and dairy products. And cholesterol is really important. Here's like the chemical structure in case you're interested. I don't know. Um, but it has some really important functions. So basically helps the structure of uh, our cell walls, which we don't have cell walls because most of the cells in our body are animal cells. <laughs> but anyways, plants, they will definitely need cholesterol because their cell walls, they have cell walls and they need cholesterol in order to keep those cell walls strong and existent. And cholesterol is also found in the digestive like acids in our intestines. And they also allow our bodies to produce vitamin D. Like, although, you know, we often hear like, go outside and go under the sun for some vitamin D. That's pretty important. You don't want to be inside all day, but your body actually produces some of its own vitamin D, which is pretty cool. And cholesterol is also really important for your body because it also can make some hormones and hormones are really important because they basically help maintain all the different like reactions and making sure that your body is doing things at the right time. But cholesterol basically just has two, um, basically just has two height types. There's a LDL and there's a HDL. So LDL is considered like bad and it's the main source of cholesterol buildups and blockage in your artery. So this photo kind of shows an artery this is like normal blood flow. It's flowing along as it should have. But if you consume too much of LDL cholesterol, it can cause like a blockage in your artery. 
And I'll get more into what can, this can cause, but then there's also HDL cholesterol, and this is kind of considered good, and it basically actually helps remove cholesterol from your body or from your arteries. So it kind of does the opposite of LDL. And yeah, like this point says, cholesterol is really, it's really closely tied to your risk of cardiovascular diseases and heart attacks and stroke and strokes. So cholesterol is just like literally flowing in your blood. And if you eat foods that are high in cholesterol, then the amount of cholesterol in your blood will increase after your body has digested the food. And eating too much cholesterol can be bad. So high cholesterol usually cons contributes to a higher risk of like cardiovascular disease, like heart disease and strokes. So if you think uh, if someone has had a heart attack or something like that, then they probably go and get their cholesterol levels tested to see if that's like, the cause because then they definitely want to be more um, observant of the foods that they're eating. So like this diagram shows, like if you eat excess cholesterol, it can kind of stick into the walls of your arteries. And this thing is called plaque. And it can kind of build up and it'll basically narrow down or basically block, uh, block up completely your arteries. And as a result, blood either can't flow through at all or it's really, really difficult. And blood clots, which are not very good, can then lead to heart attacks or strokes. Now I'm just gonna quickly go over like some high cholesterol foods. These are just um, saturated fats, trans fats, any animal foods are high cholesterol foods, but then these arrows here, these are all things that are like they're recommended by various health and research that these types of foods can actually help lower your or decrease your cholesterol levels. Um, most of you guys are not at risk of high cholesterol, so there's really no need to worry too much about it, but that's basically what cholesterol means when you see it on the back of a nutrition label. Mm -hmm. So before we get into the Kahoot, I'm just going to do some quick polls because I don't know. I really enjoy Zoom polls. If you eat way too much meat, there's, yeah, it's fine. It's really not going to eat. What's the question about? It's untitled. It's, oh, well, yeah. The questions on the slide is this milk, this lactate whole milk, is it saturated or insaturated? Yeah, so you're kind of going to have. Hey, what's lactate? Is that just a company? Yeah, that's just a company. <laughs> but the important part is that it's whole milk. Wait, saturated fat is like solid at room temperature, right? Mm, there are exceptions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's literally like 50-50 right now. I'll just end it right now for like in two seconds. In one. Okay. So... Here are the results. <laughs> so it's like most people, a little bit over the majority chose saturated and it is a saturated fat. Um, even, yeah, saturated and unsaturated, like saturated, they're usually solids at room temperature, but it doesn't hold for everything. And whole milk is an example of something that isn't. And because whole milk is like, uh, like a dairy product and it's not reduced in fat. It does, it is an unsaturated fat. Okay, so here are some nuts. Is it saturated or unsaturated? Once again, this is like an example of, actually, I don't want to say because I don't give it away. Okay. I'm just going to end it here because I don't want to leave some time to do the kahoot or as much again. This is an unsaturated fat. Okay. Next one. Here's some salmon. The nuts, it didn't really follow the rule of being solid or liquid at room temperature. But yeah. Salmon. Salmon is actually an unsaturated fat. Um, it's not an animal product. Fish really aren't considered animal products, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a- But fish are animals. 
Yeah, they are animals, but they're not really considered under like dairy and like cows and chicken and pork and Wait, meat. Does like a pepperoni count? Um, I mean, just as a whole, what do you got? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. The pepperoni counts into it all, but really just pizza itself and the cheese. Right. It's it's a saturated fat. Nice job. Okay. Yeah, vote quick. Okay. I'm pretty sure everybody's probably um yeah everybody got it right nice this is an unsaturated this is a saturated fat my bad okay, uh, next one avocados yeah junk food fat yeah um avocados yeah so far so good avocados are unsaturated fats we're all so good at this yeah you guys are all so good at this yeah nice Bacon. Oh no, I think I made a mistake. That's okay. This is a saturated fat because it's pork. So it's like a meat or an animal product. Um, that's not fish. So it's saturated. And this is one of those that does follow the rule that it's a solid at room. Bacon is solid at room temperature. Wait, what is that? <laughs> Just think a guess. I feel like yeah, exactly. What is this? It was mentioned on one of the slides, but this is. I can't like... do the poll because I don't see it. I don't see it. The poll said a song. Oh, now I see it. Yeah, it's it says. Okay. Yeah, my me... Okay, let me try launching it again. Too okay. maybe there are too many poll. Okay, I guess it's not letting me launch it again. But this is flax seeds. Yeah, this is what a flaxseed looks like. So I'm pretty is... sure it's unsaturated. Yeah, yeah, flax seeds are unsaturated. Nice. Okay, cheese. Saturated. Yep. Totally. Yep. They are saturated. Nice. Okay, next one, last one. And then we'll do like three minutes of a kahoot. Uh, cookies. So far, so are those milk chocolates? Yeah, but really anything that's baked is actually uh, yeah. saturated fat. So like cake, anything baked like that. Oops. Um, those are all saturated fats. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is just an example of like an Oreo thing, but we didn't really get to that. So let's go to the I'll stop this and share that. And send okay. the pin in the chat. Yeah, I will. Let me first share my screen. Okay, there we go. It's 9924932. I'll send it to everyone. 9924932. Yeah. Can we start now so we can all be on the pod? Um. <laughs> oh, too late. <laughs> okay, I'll start in like, I don't know. We literally only have like a now. minute. I'm just going to speed around it, okay, guys? <laughs> okay, let's, well, come on, Kahoot, let's go. Phobic, phobia. Okay. Scared of as soon as it hits 10 seconds for each of these, okay. you guys didn't even need all of it. Yeah. Scared of water, hydrophobia. Ooh, this is a tricky one. I'm going to stop it at 10 seconds. So half the time. Okay. I'm going to skip right now. No. Okay. Yeah. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is like what's along those carbon chains. Asthma. Okay, I'm sorry. What kind of get? Lipids. Solid, nice. Saturated, solid. Although, as we kind of saw with the polling, it doesn't always follow that pattern.
nice liquids just the opposite of saturated fats I feel like this is kind of a trick question. The those, sun? Yeah, because like the sun kind of powers everything in our world. Like it produces the food that the animals eat, but that's a little bit too much of a stretch, I guess. Oh no. <laughs> it's not nice. Wax. Once again, talking about wax, like waxy, like cholesterol. <laughs> Why is wax in your body then? Uh, that's actually a good question. I don't. It's in your ears. Oh, that is a really good point. Yeah, ear wax. Just like in your body. <laughs> okay. I couldn't nice. see the question, oh, wow. so I just. Only one person got this. Yeah, carbohydrate lipids and carbohydrates are basically most mostly consisting of the same element. It's just that, you know, unlike carbs, oils flow at the top of the water because they're insoluble. I really like this uh, Saturated is not in an unsaturated fat. Yep. Mm. Nice. Yeah, 100% accuracy. Let's go. That was pretty obvious. Well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, what do these things look like? They were basically what we were talking about the whole time. These little chains. Yep, three fatty acids and a glycerol. Those long little chains are each a fatty acid. Last question. Oh, wait, you can't select all. I just realized. You didn't okay. make you say it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess everybody that's got it right yeah. except one I think this is the only thing that's not found in all fatty acids. All right, podium. Yes. Seven out of ten. <laughs> one, two. And what were you doing? Who knows who that is, but nice job. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Wait, let me just share my screen again really quickly because there's this really cool, once again, another TED Ed video. Yes, at least I got their place. I'll also, I'll also post it on the, oops, I'll also post it on the Google Classroom, but feel free to watch it. I think TED Ed videos are all super cool and they're really like- Oh, it's a fat TED Ed video. Yeah. TED Ed is fat. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for coming. Hope to see Thank you guys you. next week. Bye.